right. Are you sitting or standing? I'm gonna sit. Don't unmute me, all right? Yeah. So I'll, mute, I'll unmute myself. Start. No, let's start after the national anthem because we have to wait for the national anthem. Okay. It's like an awkward pause. No, they're not. They're not. Go. Hello and welcome to Neighborville North High School, where the Andrew T. Walls will be playing Oswego East. I'm Mike Brennan. And I'm Joe Salinas, here to bring you all the news of this basketball tournament. Our starting lineups for tonight for the Oswego East Wolves will be number 20, Tyler Ross, number 21, Scooter Smith, number 23, Nick Kraft, and number 20, 24, Kendall Dorsey, and number 25, CJ Vaughn. And for our own Andrew Tebolt, our starters will be number 3, Gloren Leisha, number 10, Mike Brenda, 22, Luke Hook, number 23, Jabril Adekoya, and number 32, Alex Senny. You know, already in this game, we've seen a very high intensity, even though it is the beginning of the game. There's already been a possession change and second shot for the Bills to be up. And it looks like the T-Bolts will score first blood here. It's a great pass inside. How do you think the T-Bolts are going to hold up losing key players like Tyler Hook and Jawad Adekoya? Well, they got they got so much talent already, and they got new prospects like Mike Grenda. They also got Alex Senny there who's stepping up. I think we should be in good shape for the season. Great block by number 23, Jabril Adekoya. And it'll be out of bounds to the T-Bolts. You know, Jabril, last year we saw a lot of amazing things out of him and his brother. It just seemed like they were a dynamic duo out there on the court. Do you think that's really affected his gameplay at all? Absolutely. I think he's grown and matured as a player, and he's gotten even better than he already is. And I think he's going to have an even better season than the last four. I mean, being on varsity all four years, it's really helped him develop as a playmaker and a scorer. And here we go already, Jabril being the forerunner of this Andrew... People's offense and you know with his stature and his ability on the court we really wouldn't expect anything less than him to be the big to be the big man out there and commanding there was, his team and there was an off the ball foul on as we go as we go east and the t-bolts will gain possession of the ball and mike grenda here to pass it out to jabril jabril looking for an opportunity he has grenda up top grenda out to leisha leisha driving in out to Jabril. Jabril puts it up. Air Over ball it. from Jabril, but Luke Hook rebounds. It's great hustle by the T-Bolts, and as we go east, we'll recover the ball. 
you know, a great struggle for that ball down there. The T ball is constantly putting that ball up, and though it didn't show any points, it did show the effort that they do have. And there will be a jump ball. Great defense by the T Bolts. You know, that's something they've prided themselves in over the past two years with Coach Michael Halloran is their defensive approach to the game. And it's really proven to be very a well a well made defense that has kept them in games throughout the whole season. I mean last year Andrew went I think twenty four and three. Yeah, twenty four and three record. The best season thus far in the history of Andrew. Here we go with Gloria and Leisha bringing the ball to the front front court. Leisha finds Jabril. Gaining possession, regaining possession. Leisha now is the ball driving and puts the shot up for the beautiful layup. Beautiful drive by Gloria and Leisha. And Oswego is wasting absolutely no time putting the three up. And it's no good. Over the back of the rim and it will be out of bounds on Oswego East. Andrew Ball. As we approach the five minute, six minute mark here in Oswego. The T-Bolts are leading 4-0. Jarvion Franklin will check into the game for Alex Senny. Jarvion Franklin also had an amazing season on football field, too. Absolutely. Jarvion, just a great threat. Great weapon for all sports. Here he is. We'll see what he's got later in this game. Gloran Leisha to bring it to the front court. Out to hook. Leisha driving in. It will be a foul, I believe, on Oswego. Jabril will go out of bounds and check it in. Yeah, with Jabril being such a great player and his height also, you have to wonder why they don't put Mike Grenda, who is a shorter player out there, to inbound the ball. Absolutely, but Mike Grenda, again, a great prolific shooter, dangerous threat on, on the ball, and also great defensive pressure as well. And here we go, as we go driving fast. As we go really taking not that much time when they have the ball. I mean, putting up quick shots, trying to get quick scores, and to no avail so far. You know, that's also going to be a very key point in their offense, especially having to force the T-Bolts to get down there faster. And it seems like Oswego is a very, very well-conditioned team after showing almost no fatigue right now after having all these drives down court. <clears throat> However, they do have a, small, a, a tall team consisting of three players who are six foot two and two players who are six foot four. So that height could prove to be a major advantage for this team as they do out, out height the T-Bolts by a considerable margin. Yeah, the tallest player being Jabril Adekoy, who's six foot seven. And there will, will be an off the ball foul. Two substitutions coming in, number 21, Gino Karopoulos, and number 11, Aaron Williams. That's where we go east with a quick shot. Like he puts the three game. up, three hit by number 25 for Oswego. Actually, that was a two, Mike, but here we go. Correction two. Williams the ball. Karapolis. Now, Gino Karapolis, I feel like he's gained a lot of respect through his teammates being a freshman making varsity Absolutely. last year. Also a very good shooting threat, and here's Jabril with the three, and that's good. Clock winding down to the four minute, 20 second mark, and there will be a traveling foul on Oswego. Andrew Thunderbolt ball. And to inbound it will be number 20, I'm sorry, number 21, Gino Karopoulos. And number, looks like number 32 out there, Alex Senny coming out. Ooh, almost fed it right down the lane to Gino, but out of bounds, Andrew. And it will be as we go east ball. You, you see a lot of that in basketball where it's just a misplaced pass by just a couple inches, and it can really change the whole tone of how the team is acting. Absolutely, and you see as we go here trying to set a lot of screens. Really just trying to dissect this Andrew defense, but having no success. You know, Andrew's defense, though, isn't as aggressive as everybody really thinks a defense should be. And they do really have a great stopping at shots and stopping drives down the middle. And that was a missed shot by as we go east, and Lauren Leisher with the rebound here. Out to Williams, to Karopoulos. Karopoulos back up to Leisha. 
And a great jump shot by Goran Lisha, who's really prided himself over the years of developing that shot. And right there it showed how disciplined he is at shooting the ball. Drove in by number 25. You know, That'll be a foul on Senny. Senny is a huge body down there. He was standing six foot two, and it's amazing, just his shot blocks. Absolutely, and it's great to have a big body like that down in the, in the center position. Play Jabril as a power forward here. But as we go east, we'll have two shots here. And the two balls are leading already by seven points early in the game. Make that leading by six. And Karabalos comes out, and so does Williams, to be replaced by Hook and Grenda. Number 22, Luke, Luke Hook. His brother Tyler Hook played for the Andrew T-Bulls last year, proving to be a very important aspect of that team. And as Oswego East drops that second free throw, score is now 9-4. to four. Andrew lead. But it seems like Hook, Tyler Hook last year is kind of like how Alex Senny is this year. He was a big body down there who always stayed down low to get those easy shots right there. Absolutely, and as you see Jabril here being the of this offense, getting touching the ball on every possession. Just what a force to be reckoned with, Jabril Adekoya. And he will be attending Valparaiso College next year. And you see Gloran trying to get a shot, and he does. Again, a disciplined jump shot by Gloran Leisha. As he has just been on fire tonight so far with about four points. 11 to, th 11 to 4. Andrew leads. Hook rebound with the rebound. Rebound goes to Hook, and Brenda will just size his man up here and pass it to Hook. Hook finds Leisha. And it will be a foul on Andrew for traveling. And you know, it's got to be a tough thing to see as a coach traveling. It's just something that it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen for a fact, but it's still a frustrating foul to get. Absolutely. I mean, you, you try to work every day to avoid silly mistakes like that. But, I mean, again, you keep your composure on defense here, get the ball back, hopefully get another possession. Wide Jump open shot. look by as we go, and they miss. Now we got numbers here. Gloria Leisha to Jabril, and Jabril will just take it all the way to himself, and that's an easy two. 13 to 4. Jabril Adekoya really can't express it all. What a great block by Alex Sunny, deflecting the pass. Still as we go East Ball. We see a lot of plays being set up by number 25 down there, CJ Vaughan. And it really seems like he's a force down there. Absolutely, but still haven't been able to really figure out this Andrew defense. And there's a great shot by number 24. Number 24, Kendall Dorsey, who stands there at six foot two, and he's a senior. Again, Jabril starting with this ball, really setting up these plays. And he's just commanding his team down there, and a misplaced pass caught over by Alicia. Jabril again trying to set the play. You know, another thing that I really noticed about the T-Bolts is they're a very laid-back, calm offense. Though they do have a lot wow. of intensity. Wow, and one. Alex Senny with a great shot. And he will get the and one. I'm sorry, there will be no basket given as he was fouled before the shot. But Aaron Williams and J Jarvie on Franklin coming out to replace Senny and Leisha. Hook handing it off to Aaron. Mike Grenda has the ball. Really great ball handling skills Grenda has. And Jabril will just pass it off and hopefully see Grenda's great jump shot that he's got. And Jabril really just sizing his man up and going right through and he will be fouled. Still Andrew, Andrew's ball as we approach the 38 second mark. Here in the first quarter, your Andrew Tebolt's lead 13 to 6. And Gloran Leisha now coming out to replace Mike Grenda. And you know what a great tournament we have here. I mean, we have some pretty top notch teams. Um, again, Andrew Tebolt's 
are in here. Bennett Academy Red Wings. We also have the Matea Valley Mustangs and even some other powers like Proviso East Pirates. It looks like it's going to be a great tournament. As Andrew scores there, again, really commanding that paint. Ball coming out extremely quick, like we said earlier. And Proviso, or I'm sorry, Oswego rather, will miss again and it will belong to Andrew. Andrew just being a power to be reckoned with on defense. You know, what I've noticed already in this first quarter, in my opinion, is that Oswego does have a plethora of shots, but it doesn't seem like they have many points on the board to show for it. Absolutely, and it's, 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 it's daunting to go against a team with a guy who's six foot seven and a, a center who's as big as Alex Senny. And here we go, it's 15 seconds left. Let's see if Andrew can get a quick score. Glorin Leisure will bring it to the front court. He'll try to get past his man, playing good defense as Weagle is. And Glorin will just bring it all the way to the hoop and be denied, but rebound by number five, and he will get it. Jarvion Franklin on that basket. And that's just great, great display on Andrew. And, and at the end of the first quarter, Andrew is leading 17-6. Wow, what a, what a great statement that first quarter was for the Andrew T-Bolts as they just commanded the paint and played a great deal of defense. And we, we are here for Camp Hope. Camp Hope is a summer camp provided for children ages 5 to 12 whose parents or grandparents are going through cancer treatment. This camp is offered by Edwards Foundation, which is a part by, of the Edward Cancer Center in Naperville, Illinois. The camp is totally funded by the Hoops for Healing Basketball Tournament, which is run by Oswego and Naperville North High Schools. Since its inception at Oswego and Naperville North, it has raised over $100,000. Camp Hope offers arts, crafts, music, yoga, and much more for the children during their two, one-week session in the summer. Coaches and players involved in hoops come out and volunteer their time to teach basketball skills to the campers. Certainly, we feel strongly that high school athletics should offer not only quality competition, but teach our students and athletes the importance of giving to a specific cause in their community. While each game will always have a winner and a loser by score, at the end of the tournament they will all be winners because of the dollars they helped raise for supporting Camp Hope. And we want to thank Camp Hope here on IHSA, and hopefully I believe it will be a fun tournament. You know, and it's very great to see causes like that. Now, I, I know there's, at Andrew personally, there's Valley for the Cure that also helps raise money for cancer and the Tinley Wish uh, Boys Varsity Soccer Game. Absolutely. It's just a great cause for both all these schools to come in here and really play for something that's really selfless. I'm going to go East. We'll start with this ball here as we begin the second quarter. And here we go as we go trying to find a way to score on this defense here. And they they hit will. They on the three. And that will be a three for Oswego East as the score is now 17 to nine. Hit by number 20, Tyler Ross. An easy find by Jabril Adekoya to Gloran Leisha, and that's an easy two in the paint. 21 to nine, T I'm sorry, 19 to nine, T-Bolts. Karapolis providing pressure. And you know, Oswego here really, really trying to find a way to score here, and they can't, and there will be a foul on Andrew. Yeah, it seems like a lot of their points have come from the free, throw, free throws that they've been granted. Absolutely, and you see here Andrew just being very disciplined, showing great poise here. And let's see if they can keep it up as this Oswego East team. We have really no knowledge of what they can do here. As he drops the first free throw, that is Nick Kraft, senior at six foot two, and Jabril Adekoya coming off the court now, and being replaced by number thirty-one. You know, number thirty-one, Brian Wardrobe, stands at six foot. Really a great player himself. Can play really good defense. And Javion Franklin wasting no time after that. Let's see how the Thunderbolts can do without Jabril out there. And out to Warcha. Misplaced pass. Karopoulos and Glisha both dropping back for pressure. And there will be a foul on Andrew. And to the free throw line again. As we go east, we'll go. Yeah, a lot of people don't really think a free throw is a very threatening thing unless it's the final seconds of an NBA game. Absolutely. And 
again, at the high school level, it's still just as competitive. So number 25, C.J. Vaughan drains that free throw. You know, we see a lot of penalties in football that will bring a team back very far. And it's just like free throws like this. It gives them an opportunity for two easy points. Absolutely. And here he is. C.J. want to cut this lead down to seven, and he does. Andrew will have the ball. Ball will be inbounded by Warja. Inbounds to Glorin. See, we've seen that before. Alicia will just fly down the court, and he will draw a foul. It's also another thing that I know a lot of players do. They are smart by drawing the fouls out. And though they aren't very serious fouls, just a minor one. Absolutely. It still, still helps their team. It still makes the cause a lot better. As we go down to the 6 minute 58 mark here in the second quarter. And Valgan coming back in for number 23, Nick Kraft. For Oswego East. Brian Warsha will inbound the ball. You know, right now I'm noticing Karopoulos is left absolutely wide open. Mike Grenda will pass the ball to end up in Karopoulos' hand, and Glorin will just try to find a way to score here. Really a good ball handler. Really better known for his jump shot, and he will... He, he will commit a foul, and it will be as we go east ball. Did you recognize what the foul was, Joe? I believe it was a charging foul on Gloran Leisha. Scores now 19-13. Andrew still leading. And here we go with Oswego bringing the ball to the front court. Having a little momentum going into the second quarter. Andrew trying to do anything they can to stop him from scoring. And Jabril's back in the game. And number 25. C.J. Vogan doesn't want anything to do with Jabril. You know, why would you? It seems like Jabril and Vaughan, they're two very highly skilled players and it seems like they're always on top of each other. And Jabril has the rebound here and Glorn getting, playing very aggressive basketball and throwing it off the leg of an Oswego East player. That would be Andrew Ball. That's something very simple that you learn in second grade basketball. When you have no out, throw it at their feet and let it go out. Absolutely, and if it works, I mean, you might as well try and keep your team in it. Glorin will, Glorin will get it again. Leisha puts it up. Glorin gets blocked, but he will get fouled, and he will head to the free throw line. And here you go, Glorin, exceptional shooter. Hopefully to make this game a seven-point game. And he does. Score now 20 to 13. Leisha now being the top scorer with 10 points. And here we go. Lauren Leisha will attempt his second free throw again, a prolific shooter. Hook and Jarvion in the they would make a rebound, but no need as the T-Bolts draw a 21-13 lead over as we go east here in the second quarter. We're approaching the five minute 50 second mark. Deflected pass by Gloria Leisha, great defensive play. Still as we go east ball. You know, a lot of these plays that I've seen by Andrew defensively, they've been very crisp, very hard, precise. Seems like they go through these defensive drills many, many times during practice. Absolutely, and as we go east, just allows the performance there, but Great, great discipline off the ball, and they will get the rebound and the score to make it a six-point game. Franklin with the ball. Jabril will just take the jump shot, and he will drain it. Three-pointer by Jabril at Akoya, and it is now a 24-15 game. Yeah, it seems like Jabril last year, his three-pointers, or his outside shooting, it wasn't very the best compared to his brother Jawad. But he's very he's improved very much so on his outside shooting. Jabril now last year. eight points. Trails the lead, the leader Leisha by only three, and here we go. 
Jabril with the or I'm Jarvion. sorry, Jarvion with a great steal, and he will finish it. 26 to 15, Andrew Tebolts. And they are now on a 7 to 0 run here in this second quarter. Brenda applying great pressure. And an illegal screen by Oswego, and the ball will go to Andrew. Glorin Leisha went down hard on that one, but it seems like nothing's going to stop him. Great recognition by Glorin Leisha for the illegal screen. and Number 32 for Andrew coming back in. Alex Senny for number five. And this is really Jarvion the power. Franklin. And this is really the power core for the Andrew offense. Now they have two, three of their tallest guys here. And Jabril, Alex Senny, and Hook. Try to score more points here as we approach the four minute mark here. Four minute, 40 second mark here, I'm sorry. In the second quarter. Leash will bring it to the front court. And there's an off the ball foul. The ball will belong to Oswego East. In this game, it's been very high intensity and it doesn't seem like slowing down at all. Absolutely. And Andrew doing a great job putting points on the board as well as providing defensive pressure, as you saw with Jarvion Steele for a score and blocks by Jabril Decoya. All adds up in the end, and here we are sitting at a 26-15 lead by the Andrew Th Thunderbolts. And Jarvion Franklin coming out to replace Senny. And here comes Oswego East here. Hopefully, just trying to find a way to score. Kind of been shut down for a long time, and they do. And they cut this game down to a nine-point lead. Nine-point lead by the Andrew T. Bolt and Jabril will being double pressure, tripped up. As we go east, great play defensively, and here they go. He will get the the bucket and one, making it 17. 19 to 26. Here with an opportunity for a three three point game score. And Williams coming back out to replace Grenda. A very high talent team that we've seen today. Absolutely. And number as we go east, number 34, Manny Contreras. Here trying to make this three point opportunity. And he does, as it is now a six-score game, six game, with Andrew still leading. You know, Andrew's had the lead this whole game, and it seems like whenever they score, they come back and they put just the same amount back up. Absolutely, and that was a bad shot by Hook. Oswego has the ball here, and they're going to great defensive play by Andrew, but it will remain Oswego's ball. And you know, that's another thing. I mean, as we go trying to get these fast, quick shots and trying to make these extra passes, which is good. Yeah, it seems like the fatigue they have drawn across Andrew has made their defense, made a few simple mistakes. Absolutely, and here we go with as we go east. Playing ball outside, trying to dissect this defense of Andrew. Setting up a lot of pick and rolls and a lot of screens. Wide open shot by number 25, CJ Vaughan, and he will miss and the rebound will belong to Jabril. Jabril bringing it down court. He finds Williams. Wide Williams open shot wide by open. Williams. He will miss. Rebound will belong to Oswego East. Bringing it down court very quickly. And that will be a blocking foul by Andrew is against Williams. Oswego will now get a free throw. Here we go, as we go with a chance to cut this game down to four if he makes both of these free throws. Man at the line, C.J. Vogan, who's had a great game thus far. Misses, he misses it, and I'm sorry, it was only one free throw. Franklin passing out to Jabril. Franklin finds Leisha. Getting the ball to Williams. 
Williams with a wide open look at a three and he will miss. But rebound by Andrew. And a travel. This game still a six point lead by Andrew. Just below the three minute left mark. High scoring intensity here in Oswego East. Is Grenda comes back out for Williams. Camp Hope tournament seems to be very exciting thus far. Oswego will try to play the outside the three point line and again try to score quickly here. Andrew defense proving to be exactly what we thought it would be, very sturdy. It'll be a legal screen again, Andrew Ball. Jabril will be the one to inbound. And we're gonna assume it's gonna be a, find a way to get the ball in Glorin's hands, and it is, as Glorin will advance the ball to the front court. Leisha out to Franklin. Franklin finds Glorin again. Add a Corey now with the ball. You know, we haven't really seen much of Jabril trying to drive into the paint here and trying to get a score, but great pass. Right back out to Franklin and out to Glorin with a wide open look. Doesn't take it. Instead, he'll try to go for the shot in the paint, but he will not. He will get fouled instead and will head to the free throw line. You know, that shot, if he did make it, would be absolutely crazy how he did. Absolutely. It would have been a one to remember for sure. Unfortunately, he didn't make it, but he still gets the still gets the foul, still has a chance to get two free throws here. Number 34, Manny Contreras will check into the game for number 12, Houston McCollum. As we approach the two minute mark here in the second quarter, Warren will drain his first free throw, get another, and this game is now 27-20, Andrew lead. Leishus increasing his score count to 12. And Gloran again with his great shooting, great three free throw percentage as well. We'll make this game an eight point game as we will advance the ball. Great Jabril steal by Jabril. Steal. And this will be a blocking foul on Oswego. Still Andrew Ball. You know, Andrew will head to the free throw line. Andrews had some very key fouls that have been drawn against them. And right there seeing that, it possibly is getting in their lead to 10. Absolutely, and Jabril, another good shooter for Andrew. He's been a varsity player all four years of his high school career. Misses the first one, and it will be as we goes ball. Bringing it around. He finds 22 up high. 22, Mike McAllister. That will be an off-ball foul, and it will belong. I'm sorry, timeout taken by as we go East Wolves. Both teams try to regroup here and see what they're going to do in the final minute, 30 seconds left in this half. Again, from what we've seen so far in the, this game between these two teams, you got to say, Andrews had the majority of control with this game. And really, do you really do you think Oswego East can kind of get themselves back here and provide defensive pressure and stop players like Jabril and Glorin? You know, a lot of times you do see teams where they might not have the greatest first half, but once they get to the locker room at halftime and come back out with a completely different plan, it can catch a team off guard. Absolutely. And Oswego East, coming from Oswego, in District 308. Really don't see the Thunderbolts too often who are in District 230 and located in Tinley Park. It's not even in the same conference these two teams are, but I mean, from here, this is a rare game and rare opportunity for both of these teams to see what they've got. And here we go, we'll start, start this uh, possession here with Oswego as we approach the minute and 20 second mark. Mitchell handling the ball very well. Being out 24-24, puts it up, no good. Rebound by Jabril. And Jabril has numbers here, and it will go to Grenda, who will easily scoop it in for a two, and that is a 10-point lead by the Thunderbolts. And the score is 30-20. to 
20. And a minute left. And it's Grenda's first score of the night. Bad shot, sele shot selection by Oswego, and there will be a foul, so he will head to the free throw line. You know, personally, in my opinion, I did see a travel down there. You know, these refs are trying to do the best they can. They're playing a good game so far, calling it both ways. There, yeah, I noticed that too. There really hasn't been much favoring of any kind. Which is good. You always want that in a basketball game. And here we go with the free throw opportunity. And it will be missed by Oswego. He will get a second opportunity here. And number four now for Oswego coming in. Jordan Baker for number 34, Manny Contreras. And Jabril will check out of the game for number 31, Brian Warja, with 58 seconds left in the half. And he will drain that one. And it will be a nine-point game by with Andrew leading. Grendon now with the ball. Losing time. Getting the ball across with a narrow margin of time left. Gorn will handle the ball here. Try to find something or someone open. Warsha will swing it out to Grendo, swing it back out to Gorin. And here we go with this Andrew offense trying to find something, some kind of hole in the South East defense. As we approach under the 32nd mark. Grendo handing it off to Leisha. Thinking Andrew will have the last possession here in this half. I believe they will with 15 seconds left. Gloran taking his time, trying to find something, and he will drive all the way to the paint and be fouled. Offensive foul, charging on Gloran Leisha, and it will belong to Oswego East. You know, I, in my opinion, the refs did have that call right. Absolutely. He drove in hard. Absolutely. Leisha flying to the basket and going through three Oswego players here. You know, that really does show just how strong of a player Alicia is being able to do that. He is a strong athletic one, too. We have 10 seconds left exactly here in the second half. As we try to find out what's going on here. Now, do you think that there will be anything impressive out of Oswego in these last 10 seconds? You know, anything can happen here. I mean, they have proven that they like to take quick shots and quick looks. And who knows, maybe they can find a wide open shot and get a good score. But I think Andrew here content to go to the locker room with... A nine-point lead. You know, any kind of lead at halftime is a very nice lead to have. Absolutely. And in this in a tournament like this, that's nice. And here we go. Eight seconds left. As we go advancing the ball as fast as they can, trying to find an open lane. And he will travel and leave the T-Bolts with four seconds left on the clock to score. Now, do you think here that they will either just possess for these last four seconds or do try to get the shot? Again, if in a tournament like this where it's only second half, you always want to try and score and get something going. And Brian Wars will be in here to inbound. He will give it to number 11, who will advance as fast as he can and lose the ball. And that's the end of the half. With your Andrew Tebolt's leading 30 to 21. And my name is Mike half Brennan. Half. I'm sitting here with Mike Brennan announcing, and my name is Joe Salinas. And we will see you at the beginning of this third quarter here in Oswego, or Naperville North, rather, for this Camp Hope tournament.
No, they're not. They're just going straight in. And we are back here at Naperville North as we begin the third quarter with your Andrew T. Bolt on top, 30 to 21. Mike, what are you expecting from the second half? You know, from the second half, I am expecting a lot of the same intensity as the gameplay, but I'm not sure if the gameplay is going to be the same after heading to the locker rooms after at halftime. Absolutely. And how do you think Oswego is going to respond coming in with a nine-point deficit? You know, it's going to be a very hard push for Oswego, or for yeah, for Oswego East coming out wanting to get this win and having a nine-point deficit at half. It's really going to motivate them to really push forward and put a lot more effort than they did in the first. Absolutely, and we're going to have a foul here. I believe on Oswego East for holding against number 32, Alex Senny. And Senny will go to the free throw line. <coughs> Correction. I'm sorry. Believe. Grando will inbound it. Absolutely, and that's why I have two people here. <laughs> Andrew's ball. Grando to inbound. It will go to Gloren Leisha, who has been a catalyst for these Andrew... T-Bolt runs. Having 13 points of the T-Bolt's 30. Oh, and that's great patience there by Jabril Adekoya, waiting for his defender to jump and hitting double digits two. in his scoring now. Andrew now leads 32-21 here in the third quarter as, as we will go for a three, and he will drain it. Valgan on that three. Andrew here will pass to Alex Senni. will go to Senni Jabril. Senni out to Jabril. Jabril will go in there inside. easily. Carving his way into the paint, and he will extend the lead to 10, 34-24 T-Bolts. You know, though Jabril is a very all-rounded player, I do feel like his strong point is on the inside of the court, shooting and defensively. Absolutely, and when you have Jabril in the paint, he just controls it, controls all the rebounds, controls all of the defensive attempts. When he, you can see he has at least three blocks per game here. You know, he's a massive player, though, which already is also has. a huge point. Absolutely, he already has two here in this game. Oswego here will try and drive it, and he will get it. Cutting this lead to eight. As you predicted, this game is fast-paced, just as it was at the beginning. And You would see Jabril now with the ball, taking his time getting down court, looking for men to pass to, but he can't find anyone, so he just takes it himself. Gloren thought about it. Does again, and he will miss, and it will be rebounded by Oswego. Oswego use here trying to score quickly as they have shown here in this game. Andrew standing tall defensively and they will take a shot from the three and that will be no good. Rebounded by Jabril and as we said again, just a dominant force in the paint. Really just controls all rebounds and it will be shot by Gloren and Gloren will get it. Sinking that. Increasing his scoring to I believe 16 points now. 15. It, it'll be 37-26 and it will have 11 point lead by the T-Bolts as Gloren just drained a beautiful three. Oswego will bad shot selection that will belong to Andrew. Yeah, and again, these being IHSA officials, in my opinion, I do believe that on number 20 that should have been called to travel. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's a lot to look for when you're a referee, and yes, there are things that they're not going to call, but again, here we are. 11 point we lead to Andrew, and you can just tell Andrew's been playing a harder game, and the scoreboard definitely shows it. Double pressure on Williams being fouled. Ball will still belong to Andrew. That will be Ross's third foul of the night. And I do believe that the players are only allowed five fouls. Absolutely, and Jabril here will be the one to inbound. Jabril and Gorham being the catalyst for this Andrew team as he will inbound it to Aaron Williams. We'll get it right back to Jabril and try to get it to the front court. You know, as we go here, try and provide a lot of pressure in this backcourt. A lot more pressure than we saw in the first half of this game. You know, and like I said before we took a break for halftime, I did say that Oswego would come out with a different strategy than they had before. And showing the backcourt pressure already seems to be different than the first half. Jabril with a beautiful move, and he will be fouled heading to the basket. He will head to the free throw line. You know, Jabril being an absolutely massive player down there. What do, you, what do you do when a man who's six foot seven comes flying down the paint? And I mean, the only choice you do have is to follow him, or else he'll just get the easy bucket. 
I mean, what do you, what do, you do to stop a dominant force like Jabril? I don't think there really is much that you can do. As he misses his first free throw, his second miss, missed three, free throw of the night. Drill try again and get some encouragement from his teammates. Got to relax here. Five minutes, 22 seconds left in the half, in the, in the third quarter, mind you. And Jabril will sink his second, increasing the lead by to 12, 38-26 T-Bolts. No pressure in the backcourt back by the T-Bolts. Beautiful pass by Oswego's player, and it will be Andrew's ball off of Oswego, and here we go with Andrew Momentum taking control of this game. With a 12-point lead, extending that 9-point lead they had at halftime. And here we go. Jabril here to inbound again. And a substitution for Grenda. And a substitution for Andrew. Jarvion Franklin coming in for Senny. Jabril taking it upon himself. And Glorin will have an awesome look at the hoop, and he will miss. That's Wego wasting no time getting down there. They will miss again, too, and it will be rebounded by Jarvion. Jarvion finding Alicia. Alicia out to Grenda. Grenda with the three. No good. Oswego will recover and rebound, and Jabril trying to get the ball back here, but it will be a beautiful pass, and it will be stolen by Glorin. Foul on Oswego, I believe, as Glorin tried to launch it down the court to Jabril for the easy layup. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, how there is a plan rule in and then a lot of referees follow in soccer. There is none for basketball, which would have very greatly benefited the T-Bolts there. Absolutely, and Lauren almost had a freebie right there to Jabril. As Jabril again will inbound it as we approach the four minute 30 second mark of this third quarter. He will give it to Mike Grenda. And here's Jabril, six foot seven, Four years of varsity basketball, and here he is giving it to Aaron Williams, and he will be bouncing Alex Senny for try and get in the paint. He will be fouled. Great, great try by the T-Bolts as they have great shown great discipline throughout this game. And the foul will be given to number 12. That is his second foul of the night, and he still has not scored. Number 12 being Houston McCullen. We're going to go with Alex Senny, who will miss the first free throw. As this Naperville North crowd is deeply in favor of their Oswego East team. And Karopoulos coming in now. Here we go with Alex Senny trying for a second free throw to try to extend this game to 13-point lead for the T-Bolts. Easily getting that one. Extending the T-Bolts lead to 13 points. And here you go with Oswego trying to get something, get them going here as this third quarter dims down to four minutes. They do. Exactly what the doctor ordered, and that was a good field goal. And here comes Jabril. Feeds it to Senny, and Senny will be fouled again. And again. Senny. He will be headed back to the free throw. What a big guy Alex Senny is. You know, he's an absolute monster down there, especially in the paint, just like Jabril Adekoya. They're two huge bodies that they put down the paint strategically because, well, they're gigantic down there. And here's Alex Senny. Made one for two in his last free throw tries. And he'll miss his first one here. And the score is 39-28. T-Bolts with an 11-point lead. As Alex Senny will try for a second try with this free throw. Jabril waiting for it. And he'll make it easily. 12-point lead, Andrew T-Bolts. As we will advance the ball. With 3.45 left in the third quarter. Foul by Andrew. I believe Oswego will, Oswego East will head to the free throw line. 
for a missed shot attempt by number three, Jeremy Mitchell, Jr., who stands at five foot nine. The foul was on number 32, Senny, his third of the night. And with that made free throw, it is now an 11 point game. 40 to 29, your score here at Naperville North as we bring you live coverage of the Camp Hope Tournament here in Naperville. And that's a missed free throw by Jeremy, Jeremy Mitchell and rebounded by Franklin. Warren Misha here to try and advance the ball. Number three against number three. He finds Karopoulos, Jabril now. Williams from outside. Right off the mark and here comes Oswego with the rebound and another try for another quick score here. As they've shown all night. And that is a traveling call on Oswego East. And the ball will belong to Andrew. And again, you've seen this Oswego team and they've been trying to score quickly on most of their drives here. And it's really shown that it's really not going to work against this Andrew defense that's really built upon creating defensive plays and getting momentum on their side. And Jabril here again to glory. Put it up to Leisha. Leisha out to Williams. Williams finds Karopoulos up top. And here comes Jabril, who gives it back to Gorin. Back to Aaron Williams, and he has just had a great game as he cuts and carves his way into that Oswego defense for a two, and then extends the lead to 11, 41, 20, or I'm sorry, 42, 29 year T-Bolts. And a rebound by Karapos. Karapos bringing it down by himself, puts it up, Absolute, and it's good. Absolutely, no defensive pressure on that, and he walked in for easy two. That brings it to 44-29. Your T-Bulls have a 15-point lead here in this third quarter as we approach a 2-minute 30 mark left. And a timeout charge to Oswego. And here we go. I mean, at the end of the half, we thought this would be a fast-paced game. And again, it has. As the T-Bulls have almost scored already what they had at the end of the first half. I mean, if you're Oswego, what do you do here? What kind of strategy do you adjust to your defense to... All this not to happen, or do you adjust your offensive strategy here? You know, quite honestly, in my opinion, I believe that Oswego really should stop focusing so much more on backcourt pressure and more over onto protecting their own half. Because it really seems like Andrew just constantly pushes forward with the skills of Jabril Adekoya and Lauren Leisha, easily getting the ball down. Absolutely, and if your head coach, Michael Hallern, or assistant coach, Jeff Keane, on the Andrew sideline, what are you telling your players? Are you telling them a good job, keep up the pressure? Or how do you think he's approaching his team right now? You know, obviously, as any coach, they're going to be happy with the performance, being up by 15 points in the third quarter. But you also have to remember, you can't give that team a sense of security. You have to always keep them on their toes, ready for anything. And what about if you're Ron Murphy, head coach of the East Wolves? How do, you, how do you adjust your team to stop this Andrew offense who's been on fire these past seven minutes? You know, if I were Coach Murphy, I would like I said before, really keep my team back on our own half instead of constantly pressing, pressing so much. Well, here we are. We're about to find out what each coach has in mind as Oswego will inbound this with 2 minutes, 32 seconds left in the third quarter. Here we go with Oswego trying to find something here. Give it to number 24, who will drive it all the way, and that is... Kendall Dorsey, senior, who stands six foot two here, and he has provided with Oswego exactly what they needed. He shots Williams to Adekoya. He puts it up for an easy two. And Jabril just carving his way into the paint and getting it right back. No problem, says An that Andrew Senior. Bouncing off the hands of number five. Number five, James Caligari. Then it will be a foul on our number five, Jarvion Franklin it will be Oswego's ball. Number four for Oswego coming in, Jordan Baker. And also number 21. Both of them seniors here. they providing their team with a little more leadership. And it will be a timeout taken, I believe, by Oswego. And here we go again. A, it is by the T-Bolts. By the T-Bolts, rather. Thank you, Mike. You know, and right now I'm looking at the scoring of the players. And with Leisha and Atacoya, 
having 30 of the team's 46 points, you really do see who is most of the T-Bolt's extremely strong players. Absolutely, and you can just see the leadership that Adequoya and Weisha bring to the team, both seniors, both being on this varsity team all four years, and really both of them showing exactly what this team is made of with the defensive pressure, both players having touching the ball at least once on every possession. I mean, it's good. It's good to have players like that on your team. It gives you a little confidence as you go on. They're key players, and really you see that from how they've been performing tonight. And that'll be a quick, beautiful, beautiful alley layup to Oswego East. That was great execution. Gloran will handle this ball and give it to... It'll be stolen. We go east and Jabril had quite a bad pass. Yeah, and like I said earlier at the last time or at the second to last timeout, the Wolves they really should take less players out of the backcourt and put them more on their half. And from right there, what you saw was a serious progression there. And there we go with a beautiful, beautiful little layup there by As we go East Wolves. Warren will try to bring this all the way back up. And it will belong to Oswego East as Gorin tried to advance it a little too fast down that sideline. You know, Alicia also being a soccer player, having a, you know, just an immense amount of speed. It's amazing just what he can do with the ball with his feet and also with his hands. Absolutely. And Oswego East here getting a little something going here. Have had two consecutive scoring drives. Trying for a third and... Here we go, a little more patient. And he will not be denied. He will be denied by number 23, Jabril Adekoya. And Jabril will just swing it out to Garvion, but it'll be a traveling foul first. As the Andrew Thunderbolts have just lost a little discipline here starting this at the end of this third quarter. You know, only having an 11 point lead now. <laughs> only? <laughs> you know, but after having a lead of 15 points, Honestly, as a coach, I would tell my players to be more on their heels to keep that double-digit lead. Absolutely. I agree with you, Mike. I mean, it's, it's never good when you let another team drive. I mean, start getting consecutive scores here. But, I mean, as Coach O'Halloran from the T-Bolts, I mean, you got to be happy with your team's performance thus far. I mean, they've done great on defense. They've kept this game alive and really the, have stood on top of it. There really have only been a few minor mistakes that I've seen tonight by the T-Bolts. Here you go with another... Offensive push by Oswego, trying to think here what they're going to do. Oswego East Wolf here just holds the ball. The t ball's taking their very conservative defense. Twenty Less than 20 seconds left on the clock. They want this last possession. Waiting for a T-Ball player to make a move. And T-Ball's really been holding their own inside the paint. Less than 10 seconds now on the clock. Approaching the five. He'll take the shot from the three, and he will miss. Rebounded, though, out of bounds. By Oswego. One second left on the clock. What do you do now if you're Andrew? Do you want you down the court and try to get some get something going or you know honestly that's probably the best bet for any team right now. And Leisha throws it down. No good. And at the end of the third quarter, the T Bolts are leading by eleven points, 46-35. And now you see Jabril Adekoy with 15 points and Gloran Leisha with 15 points. It kind of feels like it's a little internal competition between the two players. I mean, whoever can get the most scores here. And both players, a little friendly competition here, proving to benefit their team well. You, know, you always got to see that little bit of friendly competition out there. And I feel like it does motivate players to do better than, hey, I can do better than him or I know you can do better than him. And just push your teammates on to perform better than they already can. Absolutely, and Joe Lee is here with Mike Brennan as your announcers. Also, Nate Chanel here is our cameraman doing a fantastic job with his filming abilities here at Naperville North High School, film, bringing you live coverage of Camp Hope. You know, Camp Hope, like we said before, it's a great organization allowing for kids who have relatives who, have, who are going through cancer really just an out to just relieve themselves from a lot of the stress that does come along with that. Again, Camp Hope is a summer camp provided to children, children ages 5 to 12 whose parents or grandparents are going through cancer treatment. This camp is offered by the Edward Foundation, which is part of the Edward Cancer Center in Naperville, Illinois. 
This camp is totally funded by the Hoops for Healing Basketball Tournament, which is run by Oswego and Naperville North High Schools. Since its inception at Oswego and Naperville North, it has raised over $100,000. What an awesome program this Camp Hope really is. Yeah, and there's also stuff like that for the American Cancer Foundation, like Relay for Life, that I know a lot of G230 students do, being one of the largest youth rallies in the country. And here we are to begin the fourth quarter with your T-Bolts leading 46-35, eight minutes per quarter here, and here we go. Oswego really needing something here from their team as they advance the ball and try to look for a good score. And lousy ball control that will belong still to Oswego East. Ball will be inbounded by number 20 for Oswego, Tyler Ross. Here you go, the inbound and swing it back out. Trying for something here. Hoping for just something to work. Taking their time now. It's a very different approach than what you've seen at the beginning of the game. You know, what we saw earlier, Oswego, they would press hard every single time, and, and that's going to fatigue them. And then there's a travel by Oswego as the ball will belong to Andrew, and Andrew just getting these calls, and Oswego really just playing lousy. Not, well, not lousy, but, I mean, getting these really weird calls. That's the second time we've seen a traveling in the driving in the paint, and Gloria Misha will take this ball. Driving it down court, out to Hook. Hook puts it out to Adekoya. Adekoya with the jump shot. And he will not be denied as Adekoya now has 17 points in this game and brings the score to 48-35, having his team lead by 13. And another, and a block by Alex Senny. And this defensive pressure just getting into the heads of these Oswego East Wolves here. Alicia with the ball, getting out to Senny. Senny to Grenda. You know, the T-Bolts right now, if they could secure a 20-point lead, all they would really have to do is just possess to the end of the game. I believe it will be a foul on Jabril. Rather, there's an Oswego East Wolf player down. You know, that's something that you never want to see, a player who's down on the court. Absolutely. And no matter what side you're on, I mean, these players are athletes, and they work extremely hard all season. It, it, it's nothing you really want to see on the court there. You know, we've really seen a lot of high action in this game and high intensity, and honestly, I was expecting a player to come out of this with a couple of scratches and bruises. Absolutely, but you, again, you never want to see someone down like that, especially in a tournament like this. And we'll take a brief pause in the game action here. Your T-Bolts leading 48 to 35. As he's getting a standing ovation. Seems like he's holding his eye on this one. That is number 34, Manny Contreras. Or rather, number 24, Kendall Dorsey. Dorsey with nine points being one of the top scorers for Oswego. And now Mr. Michael Halloran, head coach of T-Bolts. And Mr. Ron Murphy, head coach of the Oswego East Wolves. Yelling at their teams here and trying to get something going, trying to pump, pump them up for these final six minutes, 58 seconds. Personally, from what I've seen in the past from O'Halloran, when they do have a lead like this in a game like this, with in a situation like this, it seems like O'Halloran will tell his team to try to possess more than try to shoot. Absolutely. And a nice little quick history of, of Oswego East. Um, Oswego East is eight years old as the 2012-13 basketball season begins. And in those first seven years, the Wolves have had only one losing season. That is a really good, really impressive stat there. I mean, Wolves basketball team, obviously a great team, have great coaching staff, and this will be a technical shooting foul, and he will miss it. You know, technical fouls, they really do benefit if, you, if it's for your team. Absolutely, and I believe that obstruction foul was on Jabril Adekoya on t side, and he will drain the second one, and that will cut the lead down to 12 as the score is now 48-36. to 36. And that foul was on Luke Hook, his first of the night. I believe Oswego will get the ball here, too. Here we go, 48-36, six minutes, 50 seconds left on the clock. Your T-Bulls lead by 12. And with Leisha now providing pressure on number 20. 20. 
as we go east here with the ball. Really spreading out this Andrew defense. Playing almost like a Andrew playing a man-to-man -man here. It seems like man-to-man -man right now is going to be a, much better than a zone coverage for the T-Bolts. Absolutely. And the 25 thought about it. And it's a travel by number 25, C.J. Vogan. You know, 25 not seeming very happy with that call. He's got to be under a lot of stress right now, a lot of pressure. Absolutely. And C.J.'s got 14 points in this game, leading his team in scoring here, but just simply not enough to lead this game against an Andrew Thunderbolt's team, consisting of Jabred Koya and Goran Leach, who both 15 points and 17 points respectively. Goran gets the ball here. Alicia looking for his men. He finds Alec. Number three, three Goran will get it again. Swing back out to Jabril. Sunny with the ball. Alex Sunny looking for someone, looking for Jabril in the paint. Jabril does get it, and it will be a jump ball, I believe, or a foul, rather. It seems like. What I'm seeing right now is Oswego East playing more of an Andrew-style defense like Andrew's been playing this whole game, staying inside their own zone. Absolutely, and Jabril here, let's take, make a couple free throws. He's had a little trouble from the free throw line tonight, but see if he can step it up. <laughs> As he drains the first one, must have heard me up here in the announcing center. He's one right... Made one free throw. And the score is now 49-36. Missing that one. Tebow's lead, 49-36. Five minutes, 35 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. It's go time for Oswego. Senny keeping pressure. And a foul against Senny. I believe it will be a blocking foul. Sandy, that'll be his fourth foul of the night. It's inbound, it will be as we go. And number five, Jarvion Franklin, like I predicted, coming out to replace Sunny. Franklin having three fouls himself. It'll be and Andrew's no ball. Foul. Jabril Adekoy to inbound it. And like we saw earlier in the game, Oswego really pressuring this back court. And it looks like it will hurt them having almost no players down court. And that'll be an amazing block by Oswego, but he was out of bounds. It will remain Andrew Ball. Yeah, that was still a great play that Oswego had after having three men down back court trying to stop Andrew pressing them. Absolutely. And to no avail here as Andrew will retain possession try again for another score as they lead 49-36 here in the fourth quarter. Swinging it all the way out to four players. Hook nearly staying up. Leisha passing out to Franklin. Franklin flying Anacoya. Anacoya to Hook to Grenda. Under five minutes now left in the fourth quarter. That'll be Gloran Leach from way outside the arc. You know, something that I didn't see on that play is nobody followed his shot to the basket. Absolutely, and Jabril didn't have that many touches on the ball last possession. Let's see if maybe they're going to try and get him to play a little more defensive basketball here as we wind out with a 13-point lead, and they cut that to 11. 10-point. Timeout by Michael Haller and head coach of Andrew Tebow says we are at the four minute 28 second mark left here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, with about four and a half seconds, O'Halloran or er, four and a half minutes, O'Halloran does have something to be worried about right now. Only a 10 point lead and there's still almost five minutes left on the clock. That's a lot of time. Absolutely, and as a coach, you never want to see your team falter, and especially in this last, these rolling last minutes here. It's the worst thing you want to have your team do. They want to keep them consistent throughout the game, especially heading into this tournament where, I mean, there's a lot of teams to be played, and some of them might be watching this. But again, I think Andrew has a great chance of winning it, as they do have the team to do it. Great stars like Warmisha and 
Jabril Adekoya. Yeah, there's a lot of talent on this Andrew team, and a lot of young talent, too. Absolutely. I'm still looking at Mike Renda and Gino Karopoulos, who both are really good shooters. And even Luke Hook, whose brother Tyler Hook last year was a really Im very important player for this team. You know, Grennan out, possession of the ball. Getting out to Hook. Nobody even inside. He finds Franklin. Franklin having trouble. And he will be fouled. As he will head to the free throw line here with four minutes left. Oswego now really pushing forward. And that'll be number 20, Tyler Ross's fourth foul of the night. And also three other players on the court having three fouls. Do you think that's really going to affect any how they're going to play this game these final minutes. I think no matter what, they got to be aggressive here. And as he gets this one and one foul opportunity, increases the lead by 11. I really think no matter what the foul count is, both teams here in these last dying minutes have to really play to their full potential and their full game here. And here we go, second free throw for Jarvion Franklin. He will miss keeping this game at 50 to 39. Number three now possessing for them, Jeremy Mitchell. Jeremy trying to find anything, spinning in and passing back out. Ball tipped off the fingers of Andrew player, Mike Grenda. Oswego will retain possession under th four minutes now. Trying to find his player. As we go now, trying to find some way to score here, some way to get in past this Andrew defense. Again, really a lot harder said than done. As they do find what they're looking for and get an easy field goal, making this 41 and 50 game. Only down by nine now. Jabril leading his team. Nearly making that 10 second get out of the backcourt. Here's Jabril now, trying to find something to stay alive keep his team rolling. Alicia driving in, getting to Jabril. Jarvion rather, and he is fouled. And great sportsmanship helping the fallen Oswego up. I believe this will be a one and one foul here. Or no, two shots rather. And the T-Bolt's finally breaking 50 points. And I believe there will be a timeout here. Foul timeout as far as we go. He's in the bad court. You got Mike Grenda, Warren Leisha. And try to rebound it. You got Jabril, Luke Hook, and Jarvion Franklin for the free throw. You know, Hook, Hook and Adekoya, they both have an absolutely amazing vertical added to their huge, massive height. Absolutely. And Joe Salinas and Mike Brennan here announcing, giving you the live coverage of this. As Naperville North and Oswego Tournament. Nate Chanel is your cameraman. And here we go with foul free throws coming up for Jarvion Franklin. He sinks the first one, making this a 10-point game. game. That'll be Jarvion's fifth, correcting eighth point today. Jarvion, another upcoming player who will prove to be <laughs> worth a lot in the long stretch here. Sinks another one. Forming well with his free throws here. The ball's falling back into their half very quickly. Here's us, we go east here as we are just under the three minute mark. And Jabril being on Jabril being probably Andrew's best player, being on top of the Wolves' best player, number 23, Nick Kraft. And there is a timeout by the Andrew T-Bolts as Kraft nails a very vital three-point shot here and make this game an eight-point game. At two minutes, 46 seconds left, where the clock is somewhat becoming a factor now. You know, before the T-Bolts, they had almost, what was it, a 17-point lead at one point? And now they're struggling to keep it at this level right now. Absolutely, and if you're Andrew, I mean, you gotta keep up the intensity here. You've done great all game, you've led all game. Really been playing a downhill battle as we go, really trying to climb back up. But 
This Andrew defense, you cannot underestimate them. They are going to do everything they can to stop you. And so far, they've done a great job in showing that they can and will stop any sort of offensive attempt. And 2.46 now left on the clock. And again, with only an eight-point difference between the two teams, that really is not a lot of time. Absolutely, and Andrew will get the ball here and assume they will get a couple of scores here to make this Oswego defense hard to, Oswego team actually rather it's hard real to Real pushing score. down hard, and he gets fouled. I believe Jabril will head to the free throw line. It will be two shots. He'll be fouled by number 22. Mike McAllister, his first foul of the night. You know, not really, not a very smart foul by Oswego. I mean, there's, there's some time left on the clock. Maybe get a defensive stop here. But bro, missing his first free throw shot. His free throws tonight haven't really been as exceptional as they were last season. Exactly, Mike. And uh, <laughs> here we go with the second free throw shot. And he will make the second one, making this a nine-point game. As we go coming back now, trying to look for a quick score here with two minutes, 30 seconds left in the game. This tournament just under, under, undergoing as Camp Hope sponsored by them. And another, with the three. another three point shot by As we go makes this game a six point game. He finds Leisha, then Leisha finds Grenda. Back to Leisha. Leisha struggling to get out of the backcourt. He gets across, finding Grenda again to Adekoya. Two minutes left now in the fourth quarter. Andrew doing anything they can to get a score here. And he will get fouled. You know, with this foul count getting very high now after taking out number 20 to avoid him fouling out. It'll be two shots for Luke Hook. Look, Luke Hook made varsity as a freshman along with Gino Karopoulos. And now we're going out there replacing his big brother, Tyler. Adding the same importance to this team. He will make his first free throw. And now make this game seven points differential here. Very important free throw attempts coming up. As this will determine the difficulty of Oswego's comeback. If they do have one, in fact. He makes both of them. Giving great, great poise. Bringing it back to an eight-point lead. And we are just under two minutes here with the Andrew Tebow's leading 55, hit 47. As we go for another three, and they will miss that time, but they will get their own rebound. 25, shooting the three, no good. Rebounded by Jabril, no. losing possession. It will be back to Oswego as we approach the minute 30 second mark. Oswego now, two three point shots missed. With 22 now bringing it across the top. And that will be a foul on Andrew, and that will be a one and one. One and one free throw shot coming here for Oswego. In my opinion, I don't believe that that was a foul against Franklin. Well, yeah, you know, again, refs have a lot to look for here. And you know, also what they see and what best. we see is completely different. Absolutely. We got a better vantage point here, and he will make the first free throw shot. And that is James Caligari. And if he sinks this second one, I do believe that it'll be matching this, the smallest lead that the T-Balls have had. I'm sorry, that is number 22, Mike McAllister here. Luke Cook losing his control, getting out to Franklin, bringing it across to Leisha. Leisha looking for a man. Six point game here. Leisha finding Adekoya. Adekoya to Leisha. Andrew just trying to control the ball now as we approach the minute marker. And He's that fouled foul. hard inside. And that will be two free throw shots coming for Lauren Leisha. Again, prolific shooter. Really good at what he does. And 58.8 seconds left on this clock. You know, under a minute now, and only six points between the two teams. Lauren with a rare miss. We'll get a second opportunity here. 
and having two excellent defensive players back there, Jabril Adekoya and Jarvion Franklin, guarding number 22 for Oswego, Mike McAllister. If Goran drains the second free throw, it is now a seven point game, 57.4 left on the clock. Really looking for a fast score now, Oswego is pressured. And that will be a foul on Andrew. His Oswego player number 25, CJ Volgan, leading scorer of this game will be going to the free throw line. So the foul will be on Jabril. It seems like tech seconds right now, they're just moving more and more slowly due to the high fouls that we've seen already. Absolutely, and the one-on-one -on -one foul. And here we get the second free throw attempt for making the first, and it is now a six-point game. Yeah, you Oswego, know, I'm extremely impressed by them coming back at this game. Absolutely, trying to stay in it throughout the whole thing. As he will make both free throws, making this a five-point game. Timeout taken. So I got to by Oswego. Oswego will take a timeout here, and again, this whole tournament is sponsored by Camp Hope. Summer camp providing to children ages 5 to 12 whose parents or grandparents are going through cancer treatment. This camp is offered by the Edward Foundation, which is a part of the Edward Cancer Center in Naperville, Illinois. Camp Hope offers arts, crafts, music, yoga, and much more for the children during their two one-week session in the summer. Coaches and players involved in hoops come out and volunteer their time to teach basketball skills to the campers. Certainly, we feel strongly that high school athletics should, not offer, should offer not only quality competition, to teach our student athletes the importance of giving to a specific cause in their community. While each game will always have a winner and a loser I score, at the end of the tournament, they will all be winners because of the dollars they helped raise for supporting Camp Hope. You know, those dollars raised over $100,000 so far in doing this inception of Camp Hope. Absolutely, and as we reach the final stretch of this game, this game is only separated by five points. I mean, it could go either way. You yeah, know, this is the smallest lead now after the first after the first five minutes of the game that Andrew has had and it's got to be a stressful time especially for coach Michael Halloran absolutely Jabril will inbound the ball it will go to Glorin Leisha and it will be stolen by an Oswego player finding his team and he will miss it hands Andrew ball again and a sloppy pass by Oswego East will punish them as they lose possession and seven seconds off the clock. Jabril will inbound again. It will go back to Gloran. Out to, to Grenda. Grenda. Grenda looking for his man. He finds Jabril. Who finds Hook? Hook stops, puts it up after being fouled. And smart play by Hook waiting for the defender to go over him. Also Foul drawing hard. a foul on him. Two for two from the free throws tonight. Proving his worth here in this final seconds of this game. You know, any points here will definitely benefit them. And a foul timeout called by Oswego. As Andrew is just trying to escape here without any kind of upset by, or comeback rather, by Oswego East. You know, both teams having a very huge amount of talent. Seems like 25. He's the top scorer of the game right now with 19 points. 25 being CJ Vogan, senior, who stands at 6'2" providing a lot of leadership for this team. And you also just as Jabril Adekoya is providing much needed leadership. Yes. Seems like CJ is doing the same thing. Absolutely. Here we go, two free throws coming up for number 22, Luke Hook. And it's we'll good. The first one. Fans cannot get to him on this one. Much needed free throw and he will get a second opportunity here to make this a seven point game and he gets it. Nearly seven points now with only 35 seconds left. We've seen this a lot of times in games. Be he puts up three. No good. Quick foul by Oswego as Gloran will go to the free throw line and this is the last person you want there. You know, McAllister on the foul being a second of the night. You know, McAllister, he hasn't come in except for this fourth quarter. And he has made a pretty big difference on the defensive end. Absolutely, and Gorn will get two free throw attempts here. Prolific shooter, senior leader here on this Andrew team. Rising stars. 
Jabril and Jarvion will be in the backcourt to prevent any quick play as Gloran sinks his first free throw. Making the game 59-51, an eight-point lead once again. He's kind of put the stake through the heart here. Gloran will try to make this a nine-point game. And he does not. As we will get an opportunity here to drive the ball down the corner and get a quick score. Vogan with the shot, and it's good. Vogan everywhere tonight. Deserved. Vogan scoring 21 points now, outscoring Leisha and Jarvion. 16.4 seconds left on this clock. Now you got to think quick fouls by Oswego here if they want to stay in this game. I mean, unless if Andrew does get the ball, they do drain seconds off that clock. He'll be looking at your first 0-1 start to this tournament. You know, both teams, they do deserve the win, but it's all going to come down to who tries harder at this end, at these last 15 seconds of this game. Absolutely, and kudos to Oswego for trying to be a very hard, staying in a game that's been very hard fought. But and coming back to at a caliber like this. Absolutely, and coming back to within five, but this Andrew Tebolt's team, just a firehouse full of great players and just proving that defense does win basketball games that they have shown at the beginning and the end here. Making great plays and great stops and just showing a lot of poise as a team. And Gibraltar, Koya, Gore, and Leisha doing great to lead. And here we go. 16.4 seconds left on the clock. Jabril will inbound. And Jabril will take a timeout. But it looks like the referee will maybe call for the foul first. And indeed, it is a foul, Mike. And Jarvion Franklin will take the free throws with it. They'll be on number 34, his first foul of the night. Jarvion for the first free throw attempt. Money. And it's good. That is now his 10th point of the night. He extends this game to seven. Hopefully eight now. And he will be a little short. Here we go, less than 15 seconds on the clock. Oswego will get a quick score. And taking a very smart play there, picking up the ball and inbounding it to stop the clock. 5.8 seconds left here. So it'll be a technical be taken by Alicia. A technical foul and the ball back. That was a very smart foul, though, in my opinion. He will sink it and make this a six-point game, 61-55. We'll get another opportunity here. And the possession of the ball. Seeing some both. Alicia now has 19 points in this game. Outscoring Jabril. And here we go. Andrew gets the ball back with less, less than six seconds here. And Jabril struggling to find a player. Timeout taken by the Andrew bench. Coach Michael Halloran have a quick word with his team with these last final dying seconds coming. Seven minutes, seven si points now separate these two teams, and in six seconds, that's going to be a, a miracle to get these points back. Absolutely, and I believe this game. We'll go to the Andrew T. Bolts. Knock on wood. If nothing crazy or funky happens in these dying seconds, they should come out here with a 1-0 start in this Oswego and Naperville North Tournament sponsored by Camp Hope. Again, you got Mike Brennan here and Joe Salinas announcing this game. Nate Chanel is, camera guy, is your cameraman giving you all the greatest footage and the best coverage of the game as we return back to this game. 
With six seconds left on the clock now, 5.8 to be exact. Jabril Adekoyo will take his time getting over there to inbound it. Brandon now with the ball, trying to hold on to it. Cool. And another foul taken by Oswego. Immediately, they will have 4.1 seconds left on the clock. And now I'm just thinking maybe it's a little... Maybe a little rude at this point to be fouling. Absolutely. Four seconds. I really don't see any way Oswego can come back here. Especially if Grandis sinks these two. He won't sink both of them. Grenda will get a second opportunity here to make this a 63-55 point game, and he misses, he misses both free throws. Dying seconds here as we go just launch it up, and that's that's our ball game, folks. With your t bolts winning this game 62-55 and taking a 1-0 lead. And again, this is from the Hoops for Healing Tournament. The Hoops for Healing Tournament at Naperville North High School. Once again, this is Mike Brennan. And Joe Salinas here with our cameraman, Nate Chanel. And we will see you demise guys tomorrow for the next game in this amazing tournament sponsored by Naperville North and Oswego. Thank you and have a great night.